Well, what's happening, Journey Church? Happy Easter. It's so good to see all of you online in your Easter new outfit, those new PJs, that new robe. Uh, whether you are part of the Journey family or a newbie, uh, maybe you're jumping online for the first time or maybe someone you know uh, started a watch party and you are a part of it. Uh, no matter what that is, welcome home, welcome to the Journey Church. Easter is all about the resurrection of Jesus. Breaking news, newsflash, Jesus is alive. Jesus kicked down the door of death. Easter is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. But it's also our birthday. The Journey Church began on Easter Sunday 2007. We are 13 years old. We are a teenager. Come on. I know some of you are thinking <laughs> our preacher acts like a teenager. I do. It's hard to believe we are 13 years in. And now it's Easter 2020. And we have six different locations. Uh, Pastor Bill Kamai in Livonia, Michigan. Pastor Donald uh, Sharon, who oversees our West Campus in Nassau County. Pastor Ryan Weber oversees our Island Campus in Nassau County. Uh, Pastor Van Power and Justin Brewer oversee our Dallas, Georgia location. And, and lastly, Pastor Scott Winnie, who is hosting a watch party, is, is launching a Journey Church in Columbia, Tennessee, this fall come on man that's so amazing the journey exists because jesus defeated death the church is alive because jesus defeated death yet over a span of nine verses in first corinthians chapter 15 paul uses the word if he uses the word if Six different times referring to the resurrection of Jesus. In verse 13, Paul said, If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. Suppose for a moment the resurrection of Jesus is not true. It's false. It's a fairy tale. The cold, dead, crucified body of Jesus never resurrected. Paul proposes the question, what if? What if Jesus did not defeat death? What then? What are the implications if the resurrection of Jesus is a myth? The Apostle Paul says if there's no resurrection, then our preaching is foolish and has no foundation. And, and since I'm a preacher... In the loosest sense, I know some of you may argue, but since I'm a preacher, that gets my attention. Paul says if you take away every phrase in the New Testament that refers to the resurrection, then all you have left is a collective collection of writings that would never, ever make sense. Without the resurrection of Jesus, there is no gospel message. The resurrection is the core truth. It's the hope of the gospel. Yes, the death of Christ is critical and we celebrate his death on Good Friday, but, 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 but if the death of Christ is all we have, then there's nothing to celebrate. Easter is a celebration that Jesus came out of the grave, that Jesus came out of the tomb. Easter is a celebration that Jesus defeated death. And I get it, for some people, that doesn't make sense. Because the resurrection is just a part of Jesus' story. Some people say, Jesus did a lot of good things. He did miracles. Why can't I just enjoy all of that? And not have to deal with the resurrection. I, I, I'm, I'm into the non-judgmental Jesus, but not the resurrected Jesus. I, I'm sorry, but that's not an option. Listen, the moment you put Jesus back in the tomb, the moment you put Jesus back in the grave, every other word that he said in this book has no value. When Jesus came out of the grave, he proved that he was who he said he was. 
He proved that he had power over death, hell, and the grave. Newsflash, when Jesus said, it is finished on the cross, it was not a declaration that his life was over. No, sir, not a chance. It was a declaration that a debt had been paid in full. Paul said, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. Without the resurrection, Jesus was just another Jewish rabbi that went off the rails. Without the resurrection, Jesus was just another wannabe Messiah executed by Rome and imprisoned by a grave forever. But that's not the gospel message. That's not the word of God. That's not the blessed hope we have in Jesus. That's physical eyes that have not been opened to the truth of God's word. For 13 years, I've been preaching the gospel. It's what God called me to do when I was 22. It's what I surrendered to do when I was 42. Aren't you thankful that God never stops pursuing us? That he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion? I love to preach God's word. I love to pour into other pastors who love to teach God's word. But if Jesus didn't come out of the grave, then everything I've done has been in vain. It's foolish. It's empty. It's void of any substance. If the resurrection of Jesus is not real, then get off Facebook Live. Get off YouTube. Go, go out in the yard and play. Do an Easter egg hunt. Oh, we can turn out the lights. Party's over. But, but, but don't do that. Because the message of hope is that Jesus is alive. Jesus did defeat death. Paul told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. Watch this. On your screen, your screen on your phone, on your TV, wherever you are watching from. He said, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. It's in vain. It's empty. It's, it has no substance. And so is what? Your faith. And then he said in verse 17... If Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. You are still guilty of your sins. Christ on the cross reminds all of us that we really have two choices in life. We can respond to God's free gift of salvation his son Jesus becoming our sin, paying the penalty for our sin, or we can reject Jesus' free gift of salvation and one day stand guilty before God. You have free will. You can put your faith, hope, and trust in the finished work of Jesus, or you can choose, you can choose to let your unbelief determine your destination. 2,020 years ago, Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He, he, he took our place. He became our sin. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, God made him. Who, who is him? He's talking about his son, Jesus, who had no sin, who had never sinned to be sin for who? For us, all of humanity, so that in him, in him, not you, not anyone else, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When you say yes to Jesus, when you cross over the line of faith, when you repent of your sins, a transaction takes place. God exchanged your sin for his salvation, your filth for his forgiveness, your plan for his purpose, and your hopelessness for his hope. Understand, you are born into sin. 
I am born into sin. We're all born into depravity. The Bible says, for all have sinned. For all fall short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Our sin violates God's holy standard. So what did God do? For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. You can put your name right there. For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son to take your place, to become your sin. That whosoever, right, open invitation for anyone who's done anything, believes, believes, places their entire trust in him, shall not perish, but have eternal 26 words of hope that begin with God and end with life. For God so loved you. I believe this pandemic has reminded all of us that we are finite people. The Bible says that no one can escape the power of the grave. Psalms 89, 48. The Bible says all will die. Not 90%, not 95%, not 99%, but all will die. It's statistically proven that 10 out of every 10 people die. Out of 20, 40, 80, do you get the picture? You cannot hide from death. You cannot run from death. You have an appointment that you cannot reschedule. And here's what you need to understand, sir, ma'am, teenager, the flat line, beep, is not the finish line. The flat line is not the finish line. You are going to spend eternity somewhere forever. Why? Because dead people don't really die. You transition from this place to somewhere else. And according to this book, and I know this is not popular teaching, you will spend eternity in a place called heaven or a place called hell. When you die, you don't cease to exist. You don't reincarnate. You don't come back as a butterfly or a rhinoceros. You are going to spend eternity somewhere forever. When I was 18 years old, I placed my faith and trust in Jesus. I made a decision to follow him. And I honestly don't recall. I, I don't really remember the emotions that I felt in that moment. But I do remember like it was yesterday, a weight was lifted off of me. And the burden of my sin was gone. The guilt of my sin was gone when I experienced God's amazing grace gone Jesus died for your sins it's why he came into the world he he came to seek and to save what was lost what was lost I was lost you were lost all of humanity was lost but three days later he defeated death proving that he was the son of God and able to forgive sin and bring freedom to our soul if Jesus is not alive, we are all doomed for destruction. And our faith is useless. But Jesus is alive. And the church is alive. This building is empty. But this is not the church. You are the church. We are the church. We are alive in Christ Jesus. The birth of the church is found in the book of Acts, where God sent the Holy Spirit, and Peter preaches his first sermon at Pentecost, and 3,000 people get saved. Thousands and thousands and thousands of lives are changed forever by the power of the resurrection. The early church exploded for two reasons. 
the filling of the Holy Spirit of God, and the preaching of the resurrection of Jesus. Read the book of Acts. Every sermon addresses the resurrection of Jesus. On the day of Pentecost, when thousands and thousands got saved, Peter said this in Acts 2.32. Watch this. God raised Jesus from the dead. And then he says, and we are all, what? Witnesses of this. Over and over and over in the book of Acts, you will see that phrase. The disciples saw the resurrected Jesus. They saw his nail-scarred hands and his feet, and they couldn't help but tell everyone that Jesus is alive. He's alive. That's why you've tuned in. That's why you are watching. Because you know that he's alive. Or you have questions. God is stirring in you to seek after the very one that created you. John 19.30 is a simple but profound text because its implications are far-reaching and eternal. The text says, when Jesus had received the sour wine. Now, if you know the story, on the cross, Jesus says, I thirst. I thirst. And the Bible says, after he received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Let's say, let's say that all together. It is finished. Say it again. It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. The barbaric execution that Jesus suffered on the cross is summed up in those three words. It is finished. Jesus knew he had accomplished everything the Father sent him to do. Those three words come from one Greek word called tetelestai. Tetelestai. And it was a word used by a servant reporting back to his master, I have completed the task assigned to me. The word actually means it stands finished and it will always be finished. Again, not specifying the end of Jesus' life, but the completion of the work he had on earth. The verb is in perfect tense. Kara said that earlier. It is finished. Jesus experienced the agony and the punishment of death, hell, and sin for you, for me, for all of eternity, for all of humanity. He was not guilty of sin, but he suffered for all sin. Paul said it like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 through 57 he said where oh death is your victory where oh death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to god he gives us what victory how through jesus christ you see here's the truth the resurrection is not only about the past and the future is also about the here and now. Paul said in verse 19, if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied. When I read this verse uh, about a week ago, putting this message together, I had this uh, ADD pi square moment with Clubber Lang, right? I pity the fool. <laughs> you remember that? Anyway, sorry, squirrel moment. Watch this. If our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. In other words, if Christ is not our, our resurrected hope, then our current life will come unraveled. If you live your life for just here and now, one second after you die, you are going to wish you never lived. 
The only reason my life has purpose is because on June 22nd, 1983, I said yes to Jesus. I stepped across the line of faith. I repented of my sins. And yes, I still have issues. I still encounter difficult seasons of life. But my soul, my soul is anchored to heaven. One day I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus, my creator and my savior. But, but everything I do here on earth is still connected to God's plan and purpose for my life. The Bible says if you only have this life, it's not enough. It's not enough. When God created you, he hardwired you with a God-shaped vacuum in your heart. An emptiness that only he can fill. Without a relationship with God through his son Jesus, your life will always be incomplete and empty. That, that, that was Paul's argument in 1 Corinthians 15. If Christ is not risen in our life, then everything else falls apart. But, but, but all the what ifs are trumped by verse 20 when the Apostle Paul says, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. I'm a witness. I saw him. The Bible is crystal clear that Jesus is not in the tomb. He's alive. He defeated death. That's the hope of Easter. Without the resurrection of Jesus, there is no gospel and there is no good news. There's nothing, absolutely nothing to believe in except a fantasy story about a good man who walked on this planet. But if Jesus did what he said he did, and he did, because it's historically proven, then all of us, Every single one of us stand at the crossroads of John 3, 3 and John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. He can't lie. Because if he lies, then throw this book in the garbage. I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, talking about a, a spiritual rebirth, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Jesus said in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? God is not a bully. He will never force you to follow him. He will never force you to say yes to Jesus. The decision is totally up to you. You have free will. You, you can respond to Jesus or you can reject Jesus. Question. When your heart beats for the very last time, and it will, it will. What will be your final destination? What will be your final destination? The Bible tells us in James chapter 4 verse 14, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? I think we've seen that current event right here, right now. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Things have changed. Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while and then it's gone. I've learned in 13 years of ministry that life is short and death does not discriminate. Rich, poor, moral, murderer, young, old, red, yellow, black, or white, it does not matter. One day your heart is going to beat for the very last time. And the truth is, if you leave planet Earth without Jesus, you will spend eternity without God separated from him forever in a place called hell. It's a real place. It's real. But here's what I love about God. And here's what I love about his word. 
in Revelation 19.11. The writer John says, I saw heaven standing open. I saw heaven standing open. I love that. Heaven is open. It's open for business. It's open for you. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. In this text, Jesus uses a door as a symbol of salvation. And who does the knocking? It's Jesus. So if Jesus does the knocking, what is your responsibility? It's to open the door and let him come into your life. Let him resurrect you from your sin. In Revelation chapter 19, the Bible says, Jesus' eyes are like blazing fire. I love that. Because there's passion in the eyes of Jesus because his desire is that no one would die without knowing him. And on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, the blood that he shed for all of humanity. And his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Heaven is standing open. Jesus is on a white horse and his robe is dipped in his own blood. But all that follow him are white and clean. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus is alive. And if you don't know him, you need him. The Bible says in 1 Timothy, there is only one God and Jesus is the only one who can bring us to him. God left heaven. He put on human clothes to rescue all of us from ourselves. I, I looked up the word all in the original Greek and you know what it means? All. Anyone from anywhere has done anything. It's why the Bible says anyone, any person who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Anyone. God cannot lie. He says, if you call on me, I will rescue you. Please understand, I am not peddling religion, and I'm not trying to shove Jesus down your throat. I just want you to know we are not born bad people who need, who need to become better. No, sir, that's self-help. We are dead people who need to be brought back to life. We are dead in our sin. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Can I ask you a question? Do you believe this? Has there ever been a time when you said yes to Jesus and your life was never, ever the same again? Understand, you cannot come to Jesus and remain the same. That's impossible. Because the Bible says the old life is gone and the new life comes. No, you will not be perfect. You will still make mistakes. But you cannot come to Jesus and remain the same. And so if that's you, you got online, someone invited you to watch today's experience. I want to give you an opportunity to walk out of darkness into light. You can do that right where you are online, wherever you are watching from. Just say to God, I am ready to give you my heart. God, I'm ready to give you my entire heart, my whole heart. I admit that I am a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. I need your mercy. I need your grace. Just say, Jesus, save me. Forgive me. Change me. Make me new. And then, in a posture of surrender, just say, God, I commit my entire life to you. I'm yours. I'm no longer mine. I give you my life. 
now if you just prayed that prayer and you just invited Jesus into your life, I want you to comment, I just said yes to Jesus. Come on. Don't let fear keep you from telling everyone you just said yes to Jesus. I don't care if you're watching with a group of 50 people, 10 people, or just you by yourself. Write in the comments, I just gave my life to Christ. I just surrendered. Because we want to follow up with you. We want to help you live out the Christian life. We want to help you take your next step. Can we take five seconds and just celebrate the people who just said yes to Jesus? Come on. Let's do that everywhere, wherever you are. It's amazing. Your life will never, ever be the same again. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And God, I'm, I'm so thankful for your word. Your word is alive because you are alive. You defeated death. The tomb is empty. And God, you, you gave up your life for us. You suffered and suffocated on the cross for us. And you rose again for our freedom. So we celebrate you today. We celebrate you every day. And we thank you for every person who just said yes to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. May their life be forever changed by the gospel, the good news that Jesus is alive. God, we love you. We thank you. And all God's people said from their home, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you are joining us for the very first time, would you simply comment new or first time? Um, if you need prayer, simply comment prayer, and we'll have someone follow up with you. We would love to pray with you, have a conversation with you. And most importantly, as Pastor Daryl said, if you said yes to Jesus today, we want to celebrate with you. You can just comment, hey, I said yes to Jesus. Uh, someone on there probably has posted, I said yes to Jesus. Like the comment. We want to have a conversation with you and help you take your next steps. Share this. Like this. Uh, share it with people who need to hear this message, and make sure you join us next week. We love you guys, and celebrate Easter. Make some great memories together.